Hello all, welcome to my channel. So today we'll be talking about the working capital. So delving into the definition of working capital. So it is defined by the current assets less current liabilities. So if we talk about the operating working capital or a little refined version of what we just defined. So we can say that the operating working capital is defined as the operating current assets less the operating current liabilities. Uh, so in this case, we'll exclude the non-operating line items such as cash, then current investments, then short-term debt, or anything that is uh, non-operating in nature on both the assets and the liability side, which are current in nature. So the reason as to why we are doing this is because these uh, items are not directly related to what the company is producing in terms of the goods or the services that it is rendering to the clients. Hence we are in hence we are more concerned or more interested in something that is directly related to the business operations of the company or the core business of the company. Uh, so some items uh, that we can define under this head or the operating working capital are uh, the items such as the trade receivables, the payables, then we have uh, prepaid expenses or deferred revenue etc. So we have other line items as well. So I'm just defining some of them here. So uh, one of the reasons as to why we are interested in working capital is that we want to know what impact does it have on the cash flow. But the net working capital change is uh, going to tell us exactly by what amount either in the positive or negative direction is this networking capital change going to affect the cash flows and ultimately how is it going to affect the valuation so in case of the dcf analysis let's say if the working capital change or the nwc change it is a negative value and uh, let's say the it has a high magnitude so that that is going to bring down the cash and ultimately it is going to bring down the valuation as well so this is the reason as to why we are more concerned about the networking capital change instead of the working capital in itself. Now, in order to calculate the work, uh, the networking capital change, so what we do is, for instance, if I talk about the asset side, uh, so just to simplify it, I'll take inventories in the asset side. So I'm assuming that there is only inventory on the asset side and I am uh, I want to calculate the change in inventory. So in order to calculate it, now I'm assuming that in the last fiscal, let's say, or the, or the previous fiscal in FY20, there was no inventory. But in the current fiscal, let's say FY21, the inventory is 100. So whatever currency uh, that you want to take, just suit yourself. Uh, so in, in order to calculate the change in inventory, what I'll do is, now since I am, uh, so this is going to be on the cash flow statement so i need to look at from the cash point of view now since there has been inventory increase in the current fiscal as compared to the last so there might have been some cash that has that that would have been used in order to either purchase this inventory or to make this inventory so there is a uh, i mean there's a cash outflow for this right so in order to show that cash outflow or a negative uh, 100 so what I'll do is I'll subtract. So from the formula you can see. So I'll subtract the current uh, year line item or the current year value for the inventory from the previous year. So this denotes uh, the spending of cash or an outflow of cash. Since I've uh, either invested in the inventory in terms of buying it or maybe just value addition in the raw materials and finally producing an inventory. So that is uh, leading to a cash outflow. Hence, there's a negative 100. Now, from the uh, liability liabilities point of view, I assume that so I'll assume that there is only payable on the, on the in on the liability side. Now, in case of the liabilities, if there is an increase in the liability, so it means that I, as a company or a corporate, I have not paid the money yet so basically the company has not left sorry the cash has not left the company or there has not been any cash outflow so this denotes a positive 
positive amount, right? So if I say that uh, in the last fiscal, there was no payable, but in the current fiscal, because let's say I purchased the inventory, but I haven't paid for that to the suppliers. So this will denote a positive 100 because I have not paid it, although I'll have to pay it uh, at some point in time in the future, but currently I haven't paid it, right? So this will denote a positive 100. And hence the change in payable will be calculated by subtracting the current year value sorry the last year value from the current year value so this will denote a an increase basically so if the increase in payable is the case so that will denote a positive amount because you have not paid the money yet so this is how we use the convention this is how we use that convention and the formula for the asset side and the uh, liability side i hope this is clear again if you want to see the formula i'll just show it for the assets, we subtract the current year value from the previous year value. So increase in the asset will indicate or will be indicative of the fact that the cash has been spent and there will be a negative sign. From the, uh, on, the, uh, on the liability side, this will be the, the previous year value subtracted from the current year value and the increase in uh, the liabilities will denote a positive amount basically the amount has not yet been paid so this will denote a positive sign so this is about how we calculate the change in networking capital or from the both sides basically the asset side and the liability side and now we'll move on to uh, the next tab which consists of two examples so I have included two companies. One is an Indian company and the other is uh, a US based company. And uh, I have taken two different sectors. One is a retail and second is a subscription based company. So uh, I'll show you one by one both the examples. So first of all, I'll delve into the uh, retail business. So this is the company that is known by the name of Avenue Supermarts Limited. So this is a huge retailer based out of India. I have taken four years financials for this company. So this is the revenue as you can see and all the figures are in INR, Indian rupees and millions. And this is, this is the working capital change. Now you might see certain line items which might seem to be non-operating in nature. For example, the investments or provisions. So uh, please be mindful of the fact that the companies in their reports and reports of the financial statements they describe certain line items according to their business so this might be the case that these value these line these line items are a part of their operating business hence they have included it so we'll go by how the company has defined the working capital line items now if we see uh, since it's a retail business so we can see first of all the main line item here is the increase in inventories so this is a huge number and it is a negative number which is quite understandable for this kind of business because in order to sell something first of all you'll have to buy you'll have to place it on the shelf only then you'll be able to sell it so this is how the retail works hence the increase in inventories is a huge amount so there's a slight decrease here this might be because of the covid impact and now in the FY22, so period ending March 2022, so the number has increased, uh, which is a little indicative of the fact that the business is uh, well in good shape now and it has uh, started gaining traction. So if we see the change in networking capital, so mainly it is a negative value and it is uh, primarily because of the increase in inventories. So it was a, a slight uh, on a slight uh, decline mode till FI21, but it has in, again increased towards negative direction here. And that is again because of the increase in the inventories. So this negative number is driving the, the final number in the, at the bottom. So in order to analyze the, uh, the networking capital change, so what we do is we look at 
the NWC change as a percentage of revenue and the percentage uh, change in revenue. So basically, if we look at the percent revenue, so this is going to give us. Uh, so if we look at the formula, so this is how we have defined it. See, this is going to tell us how significant the networking capital change is. So if it is significant number, so this is so this means that it is going to affect the networking. Uh, it is going to affect the cash to a greater extent. But since we see this number is quite a low number, it ranges between approximately negative of 2% to uh, negative of 0.5%. So it is quite a low number. Hence, uh, I think it's not something that we need to worry about. Now moving next on, uh, moving next to the change in NWC percent change in revenue. So this is a number that is going to uh, guide us towards how we can uh, how we can proceed with the projections of NWC. For example, if we are doing a DCF analysis. So in this case, if we are uh, we are seeing a clear trend, for example, an increasing or a decreasing trend. So in that case, we can follow the trend into the future as well. Otherwise, if we don't see a particular trend, in that case, we can just assume a small a number basically a single digit low num low number and then we can proceed with that in the future for the nwc uh, so now look at the another another company that we have added here so this is netflix and i hope that uh, you're familiar with the company <laughs> so So the company has also come up with the latest financial. So I have calculated the last 12 months for so LTM till June 2022. So we have the revenues and the other line items as well. So in the case of subscription business, so one can uh, observe this line item, which is called the deferred revenue. Now this is going to be a little significant uh, in number. In magnitude for such a business because the company receives a lot of money beforehand because the customers usually pay for the subscription uh, of let's say 12 months 6 months 12 months so basically in a multiple of months so in that case although the company has not rendered the service for the for all the months or maybe the years but uh, it still receives the money so it's a liability, although it's a liability, but the company has received the money. So in this case, the company can use that money for uh, several purposes. Now this line item is going to be a little significant portion for such companies. All right, then moving on to the change in networking capital percentage revenue. Here we can see again, the number is quite insignificant, which means that it is not going to affect cash that much, or it is not going to have a great impact on the cash again on the change in networking capital percentage change, change in revenue here we can see so the number has turned negative then again it has gone further negative so this is sort of a trend we can say of a number going from positive to negative and then further negative so this trend maybe can be utilized towards the projection of the NWC in the future. Now there is another topic that I would like to discuss that is the networking capital days. So for this, I have taken the example of Avenue Supermarts. So for the networking capital days, the rationale or the essence behind this is that the company First of all, uh, invests in some inputs. So basically it procures the raw, raw materials for the goods that it, ha it wants to produce. Then after procuring the raw materials, it adds certain value to it. So the value is added in terms of either the labor or uh, via the equipment. And after that, some working progress items are produced. And finally, we have the inventories 
basically the finished goods which are stored in the warehouse in the form of inventories and finally this inventory is sold off either to the retailers or uh, to the directly to the customers and then the company receives the cash so this whole uh, cycle is uh, termed as the working capital cycle basically turning the input back into cash so how long does it take for the company to do this so for that we are taking certain line items for example i have taken the trade receivables trade payables and inventories for the calculation here i have taken this for the uh, last two fiscals and again i have taken the revenue and the cost of goods sold for the same period now in order to calculate the day sales outstanding so day sales outstanding basically means the average number of days that the company takes to collect cash from the customers so this is the final step when the com company sells to either the retailers or the customers directly so how long does the company takes to collect the cash from the customers so for this we have the formula here so we use the formula that is average trade receivables divided by revenue multiplied by 365 so for this i have done the calculation here so this comes out to be so we can see the formula i've taken the average of the receivables then divided it by, divided it by the revenue and then i've taken the difference between these two years so basically that comes out to be 365 so this gives me one so on an average it takes one day to receive the cash from the customers now the day's inventory outstanding so this basically means on an average how long does the company take to sell its inventory so for this we have the formula that is average inventory divided by cost of goods sold multiplied by the number that is 365 days so this will give me the formula here so this will this is giving me 35 so on an average this takes 35 days to sell the inventory for the company then in the last we have the days payable outstanding so for this we have the average trade payables by cost of goods sold into 365 again we have the required line items here and we can use the formula so i get eight days so on an average the company takes eight days to pay so here you can see the company takes eight days to pay but only one day to receive the money so this is a very good business model for the company basically the company's bargaining power is high uh, both in terms of receiving the cash and paying to the suppliers this is good so the networking capital days or the cash conversion cycle basically is equal to the ds so the day sales outstanding plus days inventory outstanding less the days paper outstanding so if i apply this formula i get 27 so this means that on an average this is the number of days that the company takes to convert the input into cash so the inputs were basically uh, these steps that i talked about so the working capital is defined by the current operating assets less current operating liabilities and we exclude the non-operating items such as cash current investment short-term debt or anything else that is non-operating in nature on both the current assets and li current liability side and the reason as to why this was the, this is done is because these items are not directly related to the core business of the company and we also looked at how the networking capital change is something that we are more concerned about as this is going to affect the cash either in the positive or the negative direction and finally this is also going to affect the valuation and we also looked at how to calculate the change on the asset side and the liability side in order to arrive at the change in working capital so the convention for the assets was to subtract the current year value from the previous year value and the increase will denote uh, an outflow of cash which will be denoted by a negative sign and on the liability side we will subtract the previous year value from the current year value and the increase will denote a positive sign because the company has not uh, paid in cash yet so we looked at the two companies how these are different 
and how different uh, sectors have certain line items with that will be substantial in nature for example in case of the retail business we saw that the invent that increase in inventories was a high number on the negative side and on the subscription based business we saw that there's a deferred revenue line item uh, that is because of the nature of the business so the company receives cash upfront from the customers and finally we saw the networking capital days the formula for day sales outstanding days inventories outstanding and the days payable outstanding and we learned about how the company uh, ha has the bargaining power if it has day sales outstanding uh, less than the days payable outstanding and we also looked at what the networking capital days exactly means so it basically means how long on an average does a company take to convert its inputs back into cash stay tuned for the next videos i'll be posting the other topics soon so stay tuned thank you